Hey everyone, this is Battery Blade and welcome to another video. Today I'm doing a one year review on our Tesla wall connector and the yearly maintenance for our NEMA 1450 outlet. Make sure it stays working and safe. Now let's get into it. Now I'm going to unplug the NEMA 1450 outlet. We uh, hardwired pigtailed this. No arcing, that's good. Tesla wall connector seems to be fine. This is our digital multimeter, so that way I can measure the voltage. Uh, if you zoom in here, you can see there's some wear on the outlet, but we try not to unplug or plug it in too often. So the first test I did on this, I was having some trouble because these are kind of short, but once you uh, learn how to do it, I was able, I got the uh, 120 from across right here, but uh, so it's outlet is working correctly. That's good. Now we're going to go downstairs and turn off the breaker so we can take this apart. This is the most important part, is to make sure you turn off the electricity. We flip the breaker. We're all good now. Start again. This is the NEMA 1450 pigtail we put on there. See the connection? Still nice and tight. So maybe we'll take this apart in another video if you want us to do that. But I don't see any sort of burn marks, so we're looking good. Now let's take apart this outlet. And I did turn it off. Okay. Yep. Now, everyone, make sure you had turned off your outlet at this point because we're opening it up. And sticking metal things inside of it. Yep. We're getting pretty loose here. Hey, everyone, this is the inside of the outlet. And you can see I'm not seeing any damage so far. Stuff still looks correctly stripped. Connections still feel tight. I'll explore in a little bit deeper in a second. Okay, now we're gonna push on these things, make sure they're still tight. Okay, so this guy definitely feels a little more loose than our green wire. Solid white, slightly looser, red. They're all uh, safe right now, but I'm gonna still tighten them down for the uh, Usually you want to make sure your screws are, you move them around and then you tighten them a little bit so that way everything stays tight and there's no arcing or any sort of melting within your screw. Because we're in Michigan so the cold and hot really can uh, make your wires go and shift out of the screw which is not what you want and that's how most electric vehicle outlet fires happen. They also happen because people do it with, uh, see this one I can't really turn at all, happen with aluminum wire because aluminum wire shifts a lot more than this copper wire. You see, stranded. Okay, that one's definitely tight. So don't want to break the actual outlet. The red one, you get a few turns in there. see this is what you want to do every year for your outlets so they're nice and tight now none of them should be moving and you want to visually examine that all the wires still in there touching it especially this stranded wire and we're solid so let's put the cover back on this is our Eaton NEMA 1450 outlet you can see it can handle 50 amps at 250 volts is the highest it handles and we're still looking good we don't need to replace this inside's fine and i didn't see any sort of burning anything like that on the inside of the cover so ready to screw it back on so well okay now i'm going to turn back on the breaker and uh, make sure the outlet is all right. I didn't mess anything up. We'll plug this in, make sure it still works, and test it on our Tesla. Now, after we get this outlet all set, we'll test it on our Tesla, and I'll talk about how this wall connector is handled up and some features I was hoping they would add, but they never did. And also talk about how it's worked with our EV6 using this adapter. Now, I will just test to make sure that the outlet is on and working. We have neutral to hot. We are getting 
under 20 volts. Next one is other neutral to the hot. We are getting the, it's hard to get these connections in there, right? Get in 120 volts. Now we gotta get 240. That's good, hot, hot. And ground is working. Now I'm gonna plug in our Tesla wall connector. Will it turn on? Okay, it's green, should be working. Now let's test it on our Tesla. Okay, we have our Tesla wall connector with the 18 foot cord. We have one loop around. It's the easiest way of curling it as long as no cables on the ground. That's the best way to do it. Now, open the charge port. Plug it in and it's not gonna turn green because we have scheduled charging on. So we'll check out, check it out in the car. Now we are in the Tesla Model 3. We just click start charging. Give us a little message right there. We click start charging. Now we're just going to have the electricity ramp up till 32 amps, which 32 amps is not uh, the max this outlet can charge on. Because this outlet is a 50 amp outlet. The Model 3's onboard charger is what limits, limits it to 32 amps. If you have any other Tesla, those can charge up to 48 amps, but we have our, uh, make sure you set your wall connector to only charge at maximum of 40 amps because that's 80% of the outlet's capability. Continuous. So it says 8 kilowatts. It's at 32 amps. You can see our voltage is a little lower. That's probably the power grid's fault. I'm not blaming my wiring yet. Um, but our outlet can handle more than 32 amps. Tesla, uh, this Tesla just has it limited to 32 because it's the standard range. Now I'm going to talk about some of the things that the Tesla wall connector doesn't do right. Is when charging our Kia EV6 using this adapter, it doesn't communicate very well with the Tesla wall connector, mobile connector, any sort of wall connectors. Um, so the problem is that when we plug it in, the Kia just says charging are successful. So there's some weird workarounds. Like the first one we found was turning your car off and on, and then it starts charging. Second one was using the Kia app, which is slow to do, just click start charging. So the best way is we found is plugging it in, unplugging it, and plugging it back in the way you fix the Wi-Fi. So the next problem is that it's a smart charger, and there's no app for the Tesla wall connector. So it's not even like in the Tesla app where you can schedule charging, and our Kia EV6 uh, thankfully has scheduled charging, but if your EV doesn't, then you'll have some problems with that. Tesla wall connector is an amazing product. It has not failed me once after a whole year. It was very easy to wire to. So I'd give that bonus for that. Very reliable equipment. And the cable still handles well enough in Michigan weather that it never frozen or anything like that. So Tesla wall connector, give a thumbs up. But uh, I definitely recommend trying out maybe the universal Tesla wall connector if you have two EVs. And hopefully that might communicate better. And hopefully it's just our adapter that's the problem there with the EV6. But I do want Tesla to add their smart charger features in the near future. And apparently there were some leaks about that. So hopefully that comes out. But thank you very much for watching. And this was Battery Blade. See you later. Goodbye.